All right, welcome to Level Up, everybody. So I'm super excited to be here today, and we're really gonna focus on what we call client funnels. Now, I understand that as an agent, you probably have some kind of website already. And so we're gonna talk about the three different types of websites. We're gonna talk a little bit about why your website may not actually be converting. And then I'm gonna walk you through client funnels as a whole so you can kind of see what that client experience looks like. So in terms of looking at your website, I want you to think about it this way. There's three different types of sites that you're probably going to end up running across. The first is your typical IDX site. And these are websites that generally are gonna focus on those what we call top of funnel leads. They're people who are interested in the property but are not necessarily interested or care who the actual agent that's giving them the information is. So those are great. However, you're gonna find that the challenges you'll run into with IDX websites are the first is that it takes a lot of money to drive traffic to those sites. And so you're generally gonna to have to have a big budget. And because you're you're uh, generating so many leads, you're gonna, the next thing you'll end up finding is that it's gonna take a lot of automation. And in a lot of cases, you'll find that bigger teams who have those really big budgets will also hire an inside sales agent or an ISA for short. And so for an agent who's like very relationship-based, very referral-based, IDX sites, end up sounding great in theory because you're like, yes, I'm going to generate all of these leads and you end up struggling to actually convert them because the way that they need to be converted is very different than you would convert a relationship or referral based sort of client. So IDX sites, great option. However, there's a lot that you have to build out in your business to be able to make them profitable. And this, the other piece of it is that IDX websites generally have about a one to 4% conversion rate, maybe 5%. If you're really, 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 really good and you have really awesome automations and you have an awesome ISA. However, most agents will find that they get maybe a one to 2% conversion rate. And so you're going to find it's a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of expense, for very little conversions. And so that's why a lot of agents get frustrated with IDX sites. Now, the second type of website that we see a lot is what I call a digital billboard. And these are websites that you're gonna find are beautifully designed. Like agents spend thousands of dollars with all the big companies and they get like these gorgeous images. They It's like incredibly just beautifully done. And the, the challenge that you run into there is that there's generally only one call to action and it's just a little form that says contact us and you're going to end up finding that while it's going to be a great a great digital billboard where if you're doing a lot of farming or you're doing a lot of radio ads or you're doing a lot of uh, mailers or something along those lines when people look you up your site is going to look gorgeous. However, there's not really a lot of opportunity for conversion. And so you're you're almost leaving so much opportunity on the table, especially if you're a relationship or and or referral based agent. And that's where client funnels come into play. So client funnels on, on the surface look a lot like your typical website. However, once you start getting into it, it, it truly creates a client experience that feels very familiar to what uh, what our clients are used to. So I want you to think about it like this. When you go to the doctor's office and you, you, know, you walk in, you sit in the waiting room, the first person that you generally will interact with is a receptionist. And you probably talk to the receptionist when you were scheduling your appointment, then you go and see the nurse and then you go see the doctor and then you come back out and you go see billing who takes care of your insurance. And so it's a, it's a very streamlined process. In real estate, so often we get a phone call that's like, okay, I'm ready to start shopping. You're like, great, how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, what price point in, in what city? And you're like, okay, let's hop in the car and let's start driving. And what we find is that that is actually not the client experience that clients want. They want speed. However, they want a thorough and, and deeper sort of connection with the agent that they choose to work with. And so that's what client funnels do. So let me just real quick share my screen here. And I want to show you what this ends up looking like. So bear with me just one second here. All right. So this is our kind of the visual of what client funnels look like. So this is obviously not what the client's going to see, but this is what they will feel as they go through it. So your typical client funnel is gonna 
is going to be where you drive all your traffic to. So I want you to think about like, if you're big on social media, your calls to action, instead of being focused around like, um, you know, contact me if you need an agent, because the truth is when, if your only call to action is contact me, if you need an agent, what you're ultimately saying is if you're not ready to buy or sell a property right now, you're going to, it's, it's almost a waste of time for us to have a conversation. And so we don't ever want to put that message out to the, to the public. And so instead we focus on driving traffic to our client funnels. If let's say, for example, looking at some of these other options, maybe in your email, you have a button that says, uh, uh, book a call on my calendar and that drives the traffic to your client funnels for some agents when they do open houses they'll print a a, um, a sheet that they'll put up throughout the open house that has a QR code that then drives traffic to these client funnels. So there's a lot of ways to actually get traffic in here and keeping in mind that these are not meant to be your uh, ad driven sort of landing pages. These are meant to be pages that you're driving traffic to that you've built some kind of relationship with. So once the, the lead is generated, you're now driving them to the first page, which is the consult page where, and I'll demonstrate all of this for you so you can see what everything looks like. This consult page is focused on answering the question of, can I trust you? Because if the client does not know if they can trust you, you will not get their business. So I can tell you personally, there has been so many instances where I've gotten a referral and so instead of just being like, oh, let me just call the person, I actually send them to this page and they're able to see all of the social proof of kind of the clients that I've served a little bit about me and really focusing on how we're going to help them that by the time we get on the phone with them, there's never the question of how long have you been doing this? How many houses do you sell? Because at that point, they're trying to qualify if you're a good agent or not. Once they go through this process, they've already seen that you're a great agent. They've seen that they're not the first ones who've done this with you. And so that's truly what this consult page does. On the back end, this actually also gives you the opportunity to automatically capture their information into your database so that you're not having to remember later on to go and add them into KV Core or into Follow Up Us or into Chime or whatever platform that you use. And so once they actually schedule the meeting, then the next step is it takes them to an intake form. Now, I find that agents actually have more resistance to this than the actual clients do. So the way that I generally present this, because what you'll find is that every step of these client funnels are very much focused on framing. Now, if I were to say to a client, going back to the consult section, if I were to say to them, hey, I'm really busy right now, can you just go pick a time on my calendar and, and we'll talk later? That is going to come across very brash and there it sounds very self-serving. And so they're not going to be interested in doing that. However, if you flip it around to say, look, I know how busy you are and I definitely don't want to waste your time going back and forth. So why don't you pick a time that's most convenient for you on my calendar? Here you go. Here's the link. And people are like, great, that's awesome. Now, when we get to the intake form, same kind of concepts. If you're like, oh, I don't really feel like asking you all these questions, which I don't think that most agents would say, but sometimes that's how the, the consumer hears it because we're not intentional about the way that we actually present. So instead, when we're collecting these intakes, intake forms, the way that I generally present it to the client is after you schedule your consultation, you're actually going to be redirected to our intake form. It's kind of like when you go to the doctor's office and the doctor gives you the, the information to answer all the questions about your medical history so that they can make sure that when you actually spend time together, you, they, they can focus on whatever is most important to you and not sitting there asking you 8 million questions that you know end up wasting a lot of unnecessary time. And we can really dig in and focus on you. So that takes them through the intake form. And then depending on if it's a buyer or seller, um, if it's a buyer, we actually take them to a buyer negotiation workshop. Now, this feels for our agents a lot like your typical sort of um, first time buyer workshop. However, this comes back to framing. When we focus on the negotiation element of it and not so much on the first time buyer element of it, You'll find that people are very willing to go through this because number one, they're excited. And number two is the fact that 
when when we see the market start to shift, everybody starts asking, is this a good time to buy? Like if they're, they want to make sure they're, they're not going to end up getting screwed over. And so when you're presenting the workshop, you're really focusing around the fact that it's going to give them the most up to date and relevant information so that we can make sure that they know exactly what to do to make a great decision during their purchase. And 10 times out of 10, people go and watch it. They love it. And the other thing is a lot of times I find that agents will go through and actually explain the process during the consultation. And what you'll find happens is when you do that, they're so overwhelmed by the information that there's no pause button. There's no fast forward, rewind. They can't go back to it and remember what you said. And so when we're talking about the workshop, we always tell people like, you know, look, my job is not to sit here and talk your ear off for an hour and a half. It's really to focus on what's most important to you. So we recorded this workshop to make sure that you have all that information and you can go back to it anytime you have questions. And so they really appreciate that. And then on the seller side, we, as we were testing through this process, we found that um, sellers are in a different mindset. Like buyers are very excited about the purchase and they're even a little bit nervous, which makes them open to learning new information. Because sellers in most cases already live in the property, they already own the property. It's less about the process and more about the price. They want to know how much money they're going to walk away with. And they want to know that you can actually get the job done. And so they care more about whether or not you can sell the property than actually understanding the process. And so we, after some testing and tweaking, we transformed the seller version into a digital listing presentation. And then at that point, you're now doing the consultation. So by the time that you've sat down with this client, they have, they have, you've generated the lead somewhere. So they're already familiar with you. Then you've shown them that they can trust you because we answered that question of, can I trust you? Then we answered the question of, do you care about me? Because we have already, before we ever even sat down together, we've already asked more questions than probably any other agent will ever take the time to do. And we made sure that we delivered it in a systematic way that feels more like a practice rather than just a realtor. So if we think about like, when you go to your attorney or you go to your accountant or you go to your doctor, they're practices. And that's how we deliver a great experience. And we get our clients to look at us as professionals rather than just a realtor where you're just one of many. This really makes you stand out and streamlines your entire business process. And in the next video, we're actually going to talk about how this information becomes the foundation of your systems so that you can incorporate things like a showing agent and a virtual assistant. So, and then the last one is, can you help me? And so you're showing them, you're not just saying, yes, I can help you. You're actually showing them, here's what we do to help you achieve your goal. And so now when you go to the consultation, it is an entirely different experience because they're so excited to sit down and talk to you and they actually come prepared and you're not sitting there talking about yourself. You get to focus on them. And if of anything, a lot of times we hear agents say things like, well, I don't want to systemize my business because I don't want to lose the personal touch. Well, if you think, if you really, really think about it, when you take them through this process, you are essentially systemizing the process and, and freeing up the time so you can actually focus on the relationship because the truth is you're probably already doing all of this. You're just not doing it in a way that is systematic, scalable, and streamlined so that you can then focus on those relationships. So with that said, let's dive into the actual pages so I can show you what this, what, she, what each of these pages look like and how the client experience sort of evolves from here. So we're going to do the, the buyer version because the seller version is, is pretty, pretty much the same. Um, and so you'll find that uh, we have some social proof here. So this is my own personal page. And so we have the little inspirational quote here. We have some uh, quick bio, any kind of social proof, any kind of awards that you have. And then Again, going through the buyer process specifically, buyers are very much invested in understanding the process, making a good decision, understanding that there's steps involved. And so they appreciate all the kind of baby steps here that we bring them through. So sharing this with your buyers allows you to, again, free up time. So they're not like, okay, what do I do now? You're showing them, here's how we're gonna get you to your goal. And that truly is the, de the definition 
of if I tell you before, it's an explanation. If I tell you after, it's an excuse. We do everything with the intention of telling them before so that they understand rather than waiting until you're going through the process and their head is spinning and they're overwhelmed and anxious and it just doesn't make for a great experience. So here, they actually schedule the consultation and you'll see here that there's the other steps here, but this is the one that we really focus them on is scheduling the consultation. And as we go down here, you can see there's all the past client um, reviews. And so there's everything that they need to know that they're in good hands here. So once they actually schedule that consultation, then we take them to the buyer intake form. And so our buyer intake form is really focused around, oh, this is actually, I don't know why this is looking like this. We're going to have to actually do the seller version. Okay, so this is the seller version of our intake form. So very similar to the buyer version, just um, focused on obviously the, the listing side. So we are collecting all their information here. We get to update the database. Here we're collecting all the information about the property. Now here's where the magic comes in on the seller side. I found personally when I was taking listings that I would collect whatever information and then I would always have to go back, hey, like, can you tell me this because I need it for the MLS? And so that ended up being really frustrating. Or if I was showing property and the buyer wanted to know about something of related to the property, it was like, okay, let me go ask rather than just collecting all the information about the property that we need for the MLS and that we know the buyer is going to ask so that we never forget to ask. And we always know that everything is in one place. So here we have, um, you know, everything down to like, you know, have you done any work on the property? Did you ever file an insurance claim? Can you upload any documents you have here? So you're collecting everything that you need to know to be able to serve this client and eliminate 95% of the back and forth. So here we're looking at like, yes, we pulled permits. No, we didn't. So on and so forth. This is the exterior features, the interior features. And so we take them through everything that they need to know or that we need to know to serve them well. And so we even down to like, do we need the keys or decals to access the community? Do, they, do we need a mailbox key? Are there any liens? Like we're asking everything to make it super easy so that we can give the seller a great experience. This goes into like, are they planning to buy another property? Do, do they know what they want to do with it? Um, even getting into the showing availability, we already know it's not just like the constant back and forth going into the finances. So like, how much were you hoping to get? Do you know um, how much you owe on your mortgage? You know, are you current on your mortgage? Going into the association information, collecting everything that we need to know. And I will tell you that the sellers that complete this, you will almost guarantee that the listing is yours because they don't want to fill this information out for somebody else again. And so the fact that you've shown them how thorough you actually are, you're going to find that they're like, yeah, like I'm sold. I already understand that you are going to be my agent. And then, of course, their preferences. So like, do they want to have a sign? Are they comfortable with um, with a lockbox? Like, do you want how do you want the showings to go? So you're asking them everything. And now on the buyer side, this is the workshop that I mentioned before. So now once they as I mentioned, once they submit this, so they would hit submit, it would take them on the buyer side, it would take them to this page, which is the buyer negotiation workshop and really focuses them around um, the actual process. So the best way I can explain this is it teaches them about the different contingencies in the contract and how they protect them so that as they're going through the transaction, all of a sudden it becomes like, okay, I remember you said this and like, they may ask clarifying questions, but you're not having to, that's not how we do this. That's not how it goes. You're, it just, it makes for a, a more streamlined experience and you never have to worry about forgetting to tell them something. And then on the seller side, so this is our, our uh, listing presentation. And you'll find that there is actually, um, we include like the pricing strategy. We talk about how we market the properties. We focus around giving them the maximum exposure, making a hyper-local impact, using our network to be able to give them a great experience, how we execute on the entire process. So focusing on, you know, uh, seller representation with the attorney, making sure that we're we're collecting 
um, offers. And we actually notify the seller as soon as offers come in, which gives them a, a really streamlined process. And you never have to worry about like, you know, did they see it or anything like that? We have on ours a menu of services. So this is obviously something that's optional for different agents. We cover the process very briefly so they understand kind of, okay, here's kind of what we're looking at. Here's a little bit about me, more testimonials, frequently asked questions. And that's pretty much the entire process here. So now by the time that they sit down with you, all of a sudden it's like, okay, well, yes, you are my agent and it's no longer a, I don't know if it's going to be you or this agent or this agent. It's you're my agent. Now we just got to figure out the time frame. And so on the buyer side, that's generally going to be the conversation that you'll have is focused around when do we start shopping? And on the seller side, your listing presentations will become, let's set the price that makes the most sense and is going to get you the most amount of money. And those are the conversations that are really focused on the high level. Now, in the next video, as I mentioned, we're going to talk about how to really streamline this so that when those intake, form, intake forms come in, you can actually have a virtual assistant help you sort of prepare for those consultations and do everything down to scheduling your showings and making sure that you stay in your what we call your 20 percent, which is making sure that you keep your, your time free to lead generate, to lead follow-up, to do more consultations, to negotiate more contracts, and to close more transactions. And everything else we take off of your plate to make sure that you're having a great experience. So with that in mind, um, that's pretty much the entirety of what I have to, to share with you today in terms of client funnels. So we do have an agent Facebook group, totally free to join. It's entirely around business systems and it's called business systems for realtors. So um, we post in there on an almost daily basis. There's agents constantly asking questions about everything from like how to run profit first down to, you know, what's the best way to, what's the best CRM? How do you use those CRMs? Like ultimately it's how do we free ourselves from our businesses, because that is truly the goal. And so it, it's been such a pleasure to get the opportunity to present to you guys. Um, I will be back with another video where we'll focus on really the leverage side of this. Um, and so if you have any questions, you can find me on Instagram um, at Alexa Rosario underscore. I also have my agent um, Instagram, which is automate with Alexa. And then of course you can join our agent Facebook group. Thank you so much, everybody.